Christ and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. You are welcome to this great and historic event in Jesus' name. I call it great because after this conference, your life will never remain the same. Amen. Thank you. You may have your seat. Greetings to our viewers out there. Jesus Christ loves you. Amen. Thank you for coming. Your coming here today is not an accident. It is as it should be by divine arrangement. God is aware of your presence here. Amen. Yes. I want to seize this opportunity to thank everyone here today. Most importantly, I want to thank God for giving me the grace to be here. As we all know, Without Eli, we will not hear about Prophet Samuel. Without Elijah, we will not read about Elisha. Without Moses, we will not read about Joshua. And today, without prophecy with Joshua. You will not know anything about Apostle John Chi. So can you all rise up? Let's thank God for his grace. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Amen. Thank you. Without taking much time, permit me to ask you this question Are you a Christian? In other words, does your life come from Christ? If you say yes, then it is test and temptation that will expose the reality of your claim. If you say you want to be a Christian, it means you want to be like Christ. Because the word Christian means Christ-like. If you are like Christ, then you need to look at what he gives. He gives love, sacrifice, patience, just name it. When you are like Christ, you resemble him in every grace, 
especially in his love and in his pardoning goodness. God's goodness, God's mercy, God's favor, God's healing, God's deliverance, God's salvation will continue towards you. If you respond by loving God and by loving your neighbor as yourself. Through his love, we love. By his love, we are a new man. In his love, we have newness of life. My message to you today is titled The Greatest Christian Virtue. Let someone say the greatest Christian virtue. Yes. The greatest Christian virtue. Let me take you to the book of First Corinthians. Chapter 13, verse 13. Hallelujah. First Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 13. And now, these, these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. There are three things in this earth that will last. Says the Bible. There are only three things in this earth that will last. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest is love. The greatest is what? Love. The Bible says, love is the greatest Christian virtue. Love is the real measure of true spirituality. Love energizes faith. It takes love to make faith work. It takes love to make faith operate. Although we need faith to be spiritually fit, to be spiritually developed, because the Bible urges us to live and walk by faith. Faith reminds me that my sins are forgiven. Therefore, I do not need to be haunted by my past. Hope tells me Jesus is coming. I do not have to be upset or nervous about the future. As essential as faith and hope are, Apostle Paul singles out love as the greatest virtue. Why? Because it is through love that we are able to respond to God and to others presently. It is through love 
that we are able to respond to God and to others presently. Let me take you to the book of 1 John, chapter 4. Let's read from verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loves since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in him and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love of God and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. Hallelujah. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in him. And if God is in you, you will be moved by God's kind of love. When the spirit of love instructs your heart to love, you will love as Jesus loves. You will care as Jesus cares. God loves the strangers, the widows, the orphans, the needy, the physically challenged. Therefore, man, if he loves God truly, is under the obligation to love his fellow man. Hallelujah. Let us look at the story of the Good Samaritan in that Luke 10 from verse 30 to 36. Because of time, when you get home, Take your time to read. The good Samaritan showed that he understood the principle of unlimited love when he met someone in need of great help. Consider the class the distinction between the Jews and the Samaritans. They had nothing in common. I mean, they were harsh enemies, yet this did not stop him from showing love and compassion to the wounded Jew. His love was not for selfish, classic, or material reasons. It did not matter to him whose interest he had to serve, whether Jew or Gentile, a friend or a foe, but he had one compelling force that encouraged him to defy all odds against him. 
they need to love someone in need, someone in trouble. What is the lesson here? Love looks around to see who is in need. We begin to succeed with our lives when the hurts and problems of others begin to matter to us. Because our success and happiness depends on our willingness to see someone succeed, to help someone in trouble. Our success and happiness depends on our willingness to help someone in trouble, to help someone succeed. When you begin to love as Jesus loves, the wound of one is the wound of all. The pain of one is the pain of all. People of God, someone is somewhere in need of what is in your hands for their survival. It may be your laugh, your smile, your time, your money, your strength, your prayers, what you cherish most. The anointing to pray, to heal, deliver and bless, comes by love. It is not enough that we profess Christianity. We must run the race well by giving up to that profession. That is why I am here. It is love that brought me here. In John 13, verse 34, Jesus Christ said to his disciples, A new commandment I give you, love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By doing this, all men will see that you are my disciples. This shows that we, without love, our gathering here today has no base. Without love, our meeting here today is nothing. Let love be uppermost in our hearts, irrespective of our religion, ethnicity, or geographical location. Love that sees beyond hatred, that is, even when you are hated, continue to love. Love that sees beyond persecution. Even when you are persecuted, continue to love. Love that sees beyond intimidation. Even when you are intimidated, continue to love. Love is patience. It does not express itself in anger. Love is humble. It does not express itself in arrogance. Love is hope. It does not express itself in self-pity or despair. Love is goodness. It does not express itself in evil. I pray our love for one another should not fail. In Jesus' name. People of God, life is a learning experience. 
Remember, no one was born with great knowledge. You become what you are. You discovered what you know. It takes time, energy, and great learning. Learning begins when there is a change in behavior. Learning begins when there is a change in behavior. This Christian gathering is the high school of learning whereby many truths are imbibed. It was Jesus Christ's great design to engage his followers, his disciples, to love one another. He went to the seaside and called the ignorance to understanding. What did he teach them? God has a standard of right and wrong. He taught them to be kind to be forgiving and to love. Thousands sat for days as Jesus taught them the law of God and how to have an extraordinary relationship with others. Thousands sat for days as Jesus taught them the law of God and how to have an extraordinary relationship with others. An extraordinary relationship does not engage in tit for tat. That is, you give me, I give you. You love me, I love you. You hate me, I hate you. You greet me, I greet you. No! An extraordinary relationship transcends political, religious, business, economic, and ethnic affiliations. Jesus Christ's standard of love and relationship is advanced. It is unique. Because every issue has its own uniqueness. When Jesus Christ was tempted, his love, kindness, Faithfulness was proven and has stood the test of time. Jesus Christ said, Forgive those who wrong you. This claim was tested and confirmed as genuine when on the cross, in the midst of pain and agony. He forgave those who put him on that cross. I mean those who mocked and killed him. When your claim is tested, what will you do? When your claim is tested, what will you do? Will you stand and remain faithful? Or allow other considerations to control your mind? People of God, if your mind is not spiritual, I mean if your mind is not at its best for God, Satan will seize the opportunity to capture it and colonize it.
we cannot get spiritual results with our natural human faith. Human point of view is limited and cannot understand God. So, now Apostle Paul was busy spearheading a campaign of terror, violence, and destruction against believers. But unknown to him, he was God's chosen instrument, God's chosen vessel to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to politicians, business executives, kings, queens, and unbelievers. The design of the gospel of Jesus Christ is to break the yoke of sin and Satan and thus remove the burden of guilt and corruption. I am here to encourage you that we should not allow sin and confrontation to pull us apart. Rather, we should see it as a means of coming closer together, going together and being prepared together for even greater relationships. For a relationship to be effective, there must be unity and love. We must have each other's best interest at heart. Nothing like selfishness, greed, or hypocrisy. Don't reject anyone on account of weakness because tomorrow is a mystery. Nobody knows tomorrow. Tell your neighbor, don't reject anyone on account of weakness because tomorrow is a mystery. Where you are weak, I am strong. Where I am weak, you are strong. Success is a collection of relationships. Thank you. People of God, the love you give, the forgiveness you show, the patience and forbearance that grace your life will produce much fruits. They will issue into beauty, perhaps long after you might have forgotten them. Give God time, the results are working themselves out. Slowly, but surely. In Jesus' name. I want to leave you with the word of Jesus. love one another. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your neighbor could be your friends, your enemies, those who do not share the same faith with you. The Bible says, love them all. Love in God should unify people of God more closely than any outward relationship can unify people of the world. Love and be loved. In Jesus' name. Thank you.